Hello to all the learners out there. A very warm welcome to the beginning of the new course Introduction to Programming and Problem Solving. In this course, we will study the important concepts related to computer programming and further analyze how these concepts are used to solve various problems. So, starting with the first topic that is building blocks of programming. These are algorithms, flowcharts, pseudocode and programming languages. Some of you might be familiar with these terms and all these terms will be defined later on. But for now, let's first get a clear picture of what we will be covering for a thorough understanding. It is but obvious that we all face different kinds of problems on the daily basis. But at the same time, we try to come up with different solutions to solve those problems. Normally, they might be sequential type of problems and hence require us to follow some step-by-step -step procedure. For example, if I wanted to make a cup of tea, I will have to follow some simple steps to accomplish this task. Like, first of all, I will fill the kettle with cold water. Then, I will boil the water on a heat source. Then, I will fetch a clean cup and put a tea bag in a cup. Then, I will add sugar and milk if required. Then, I will pour boiling water in the cup and stir it. Finally, my tea is ready to take. Similarly, when a computer is used to solve the problems, various sequential phases are involved. There are mainly two phases involved in the execution of problems by the computer. These are problem solving phase and second is implementation phase. The problem solving phase basically involves generating an algorithm, procedure, or a set of rules that are required to be followed in calculations or other problem solving operations by a computer. Hence, an algorithm is a process that defines the sequence of operations to find a particular solution to a given problem. This phase involves writing a program using the desired computer programming language according to the needs of the programmer like writing the programs using Java, C or C++. Hence, a program is a set of instructions that are written in computer programming languages to solve the problems. But the question is, how does all this happen? Well, supposing I wanted to say something to someone. Or I can say, I feel the need to express myself. What can I do? I can simply say it out verbally or write a letter, email or a text message to the person. The same case is with algorithms. Hence, algorithms have to be expressed in order to get the desired results. And it should be in the same order or pattern in which they are required. But as I have said, that algorithms are required to be expressed to get the desired results. Now, you all might be wondering, how can we express the algorithms? Basically, there are various ways in which we can express algorithms. The simplest way of expressing algorithms is by using words, sentences or any other language. Basically, a language is a mode of human communication either spoken or written, that has evolved naturally in humans through continuous use and repetition without conscious planning or premeditation. For example, if I want to express an algorithm of making a tea using words, sentences or any other language, I will simply write, make a cup of tea, take water and boil it, add sugar, tea leaves and milk. The second way of expressing algorithms 
is by graphically representing them in a flow chart. Basically, a flow chart is a diagrammatical representation of the steps defined in an algorithm. Flow charts use special shapes to represent different types of actions or steps involved in a process. Like the oval shape represents a start or end point of an action or a process. The arrows act as a connector and they show the relationship between the representative shapes. A parallelogram represents the input or an output. A rectangle represents a process. In the diagram, filling the kettle, heating water and making tea represents a process. And a diamond indicates a decision, either yes or no. Like in the diagram, a decision is to be made. Has the water been boiled? That's the question in the diamond shape. These are some of the most commonly used shapes in a flowchart. Algorithms can also be represented using pseudocodes. Pseudocode is a simple way of writing programming code in English. And it is not actual programming language. It uses short phrases to write code for programs before you actually create it in a specific language. In other words, it specifies the steps required to process a task. Same example in pseudocode can be represented. Organize everything. Plug in kettle. Put tea bags into the kettle. Add water, wait for boil, and so on. Algorithms can further be represented using the set of instructions called programs. Basically, a program is a set of instructions that performs a particular task. A computer requires programs to function because they contain instructions which specifies the activities to be performed according to the user requirements. So, as you can see, the codes are displayed and they combine together to form a program. Next, coming towards programming. Programming is a process involving a set of instructions that are written in a specific programming language code that are catering to the needs of an application domain. Hence, a programming language can be defined as a formal computer language designed to create programs to control the behavior of a machine or to express the algorithms. This was all about algorithms, flowcharts, pseudocode and programming language. So, in order to explore more, you can easily go through the links displayed and enjoy. In the next video lecture, we will study programming language in more detail. Thank you.